Mike Jones here. You might know me as Grand Thumb. Was a survival instructor, uh, then was a TACP. In every way, I am like a way less cooler version of Fred, aka Counting Coop Tactical, just like my kid is. But you know what? Kit will make you look really cool, which really sucks right now because it is super duper cold. In any case, we're going to talk a little bit about my kit setup, why I have it set up the way it is, and um, the purpose behind it because everybody's kit is going to be different depending on the situation that is a total cop out and that's okay so to start off with i am of course using my non-sponsored spirit of systems lv119 because it is it's an awesome carrier to be honest i use this one along with the cry jpc and the cry spc those are kind of my favorite carriers and all depends on the situation i'm sure my avs boys will get in there as well and those have their purpose so if we go at the heart of the whole system, the plates. Um, I do use LTC plates. That's what I used when I was in the military. Um, they are awesome. There are many great plates out there. I'm not going to get into the whole plate game and which one is best, but find the plate that has really good testing behind it. So from there, we look at my front placard right here. Um, this is one of the placards that my company is making. I'm sorry, Spirit of Systems, but... Uh, uh, it holds six mags total. Right now, we, of course, have it to uh, four. It can hold a lot of different things, grenades. Right now, we have it set up, or this, in general, this kit set up is for general urban work. So uh, kind of key to the city type of stuff. So we have our magazines we can plus up to a combat loadout of six plus one in the gun, um, plus a little bit more if we need to. Moving down from our magazine placard, uh, we do have a loop for tourniquet right here. I keep uh, lots of tourniquets on my person as well, specifically on my clothes, so both in ankle pockets as well as uh, in arm pockets. So that's what we have right there. Below, I have this from Sword. It's just an SSE bag. As well, for the shotgun, you can hold your shotgun rounds, your breaching rounds in there, whether you use Hattons or Royal Arms or whatever you think is the best. Um, if I'm not using this for you know, SSE, I'm not doing military work, I'm obviously retired now, then um, obviously you can put magazines, whatever you might need to put it in there, you're walking by, you find like a starburst on the ground, fits in there perfectly. I got I got Chris a smile, that was a good one. <laughs> Going uh, to our right here, uh, a couple important points here. Uh, side plates. Uh, a lot of arguments about side plates. Uh, the argument is you should wear them. Uh, it's probably going to be a good idea. More protection is, is, <laughs> is always the best <laughs> thing to do. I can't keep a straight face. I'm not professional enough. So I am using the Spirit of Systems one, obviously. What's nice is that it does put that side plate right up against that front plate, so I have that nice coverage of protection. Um, I really do like that quite a bit, so that's what we have there. Moving to the side, we do have a cry pouch right here. It's just one of the general purpose pouches. Um, right now, we have smoke grenades in there. Um, this can also plus up to fit magazine pouches if I need to run another radio. So um, back when I did cool stuff, uh, you know, you could fit your second radio in there, whatever it may be, and route the antenna. Um, this is uh, something that I learned from Fred at Counting Cube Tactical is, of course, to keep some type of nice little wipe for your lens. He has his up here typically. I prefer to keep mine not near my shoulder because I found that when I'm uh, shouldering the gun, I was tending to push it off and it was kind of getting in my way when I was shooting a bunch. So I have mine a little bit lower. So if my optic is getting wet, like look at the weather right here, then I can pull out my nice little fiber, microfiber cloth and I can dry it off or my shooting glasses or what have you. It's just a nice thing to have. And I actually do keep another one on my person as well. If we go over to the left side right here, we have uh, one of the late experimental radio pouches from Spiritus. Uh, this is really similar to the current final version that they have out there. We do have an MPU-5, one of the best radios out there, also like $15,000. So is it the best if it costs so much? It's not for me to decide. What do you think, Josh? No, I think it's the best. <laughs> there, there you have it. Uh, running up to their push to talk right here, we do have a little bit of cable management going in the back. If you know anything about the MPU-5 radio, it has a lot more wire than you probably will ever need. So I tried to keep as much of that hidden up there as I possibly can. Moving over from there, uh, holdover from kind of military days, but still very useful ATAC. Um, so we've been doing a lot of work on our end, trying to find good solutions for the civilian world for making ATAC uh, usable for everyone. So that's just kind of a little pet project we have that also can link in with the MPU-5. Again, more on that later. Um, I always keep my Garmin right on my shoulder strap, not because that's where I keep it, but rather uh, that way I don't lose it. So I usually keep it on my right wrist, but uh, I like to keep it sewed here when I'm not using that. Same thing for my headlamp. I also strap that around 
<clears throat> the shoulder pads as well to make sure that they're not going anywhere. My favorite part about the LV119 is the back little pouch right here. So my little my little FUPA. And what I usually put there is any type of maps or anything like that. You should have a hard copy of your maps beyond anything digital that you have on your ATAC because um, digital systems will fail. And so I prefer to have that um, hard copy right there. If we move over to the far left, I have a pouch here. People ask me, what is a pouch for, Mike? Why do you have a pouch there? Uh, why is it empty? Well, sometimes it's nice just to have a pouch and just to have one. You never know what you're going to need, uh, depending on the mission, depending on what's going on. So I have that just kind of as a general purpose if I need to put something in there, whether it be your surprise grenades, whether it be a rangefinder, night vision, whatever. This is obviously a Spiritus pouch, uh, NBD. <clears throat> Moving over to our right side one more time. Obviously we have this little guy right here, the key to the city. This is an 870 MCS. We do have it hooked onto the back of the pack right here with 550 and our carabiner. Um, so with this system right here, we do have a really powerful magnet. Um, there's a lot of different products out there that have a, you know, a powerful rare earth magnet there. The point is, um, it's going to keep it nice and retained when I don't need it. Some people will tend to run like an elastic cord to keep this nice and bungeed, or some people also sling this up in their packs during long movements. Um, that's more in kind of Fred's world or a breaching world, uh, but it's still a good skill to have um, as a concerned citizen. Now on the back, I don't have anything on my back. And the reason for that is uh, I tend to wear a pack of some type, whether it be a mystery ranch or hill people gear. So I don't want anything to kind of bow out that frame any more than I need. I just don't want anything pushing that pack off. So I run my plate carrier completely slick on the backside. Um, down here, we do have a Ferro Concepts medical pouch. Um, these are really awesome. I really like this concept because it can be pulled from either direction. Um, it is unidirectional. Some people would argue it's kind of hard to get to, um, but it's one of my favorites. Um, and then it just, it puts it nice and out of the way. I know a lot of people for a while were either running it on uh, you know fanny pack or which is really cool by the way or at the back or at the right so I like having it unidirectional where you can get it from either direction that is awesome right there now this all goes into the rifle that we have so obviously we have Taylor Swift mag because you know you got to keep morale up so we have a Knights Armament SR15 uh, we have the CAC QDC can right there uh, moving over we have a mall we have our surefire light Moving over to a mod button for our light. Going back, we of course had the tried and true ACOG with an offset RMR. This is on a Unity mount. And then we have a BCM stock because they are nice and slim. One of my favorites. And uh, that kind of brings us to the end of the whole kit setup. This is one of many setups you could possibly have. You need to figure out what's going to work for you because um, obviously everybody's situation is going to be different. Everybody's environment is going to be different. What you're carrying, the very rifle that you carry is going to be different. So don't just copy setups, find what works for you, get out, use them in a, in a you know, multitude of environments and figure out what works for you because that's what's going to matter. The, the cool things about these kit setups is that it's completely personalized. So find what works for you and uh, take it from there.